Hey, church family, we are so excited to get to come to you again and do another one of these um, table talk discussions. We think last week went pretty well. It was um, fun. It was fun, so we're going to do it again, aren't we? Yep, yep. Well, I think that I have to start by saying that this morning's message was one of the best messages on that topic specifically that I have ever heard. That was yeah. absolutely wonderful, and I think that I we needed even... it. I didn't bribe him to say that or anything. <laughs> no, no, you didn't, because um, that's the honest well. truth. Um, I think that um, our country could use that message, um, especially in this time. It's not going to be the topic of our discussion tonight, yeah. um, but it was absolutely <laughs> wonderful. So, Pastor Trey, would you um, open us up in prayer, and then we can yeah. let them know what we're talking about tonight? Yeah, let's, let's pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord, just for this opportunity to, to discuss and discuss your word and to discuss something as important as how to read the Bible, how to study the Bible. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to uh, this discussion to be an encouragement to our church family. Um, Lord, just use it, Lord, to, to take us deeper into your word. Your word is the truth, and you've given it to us. Um, and sometimes it's just intimidating for so many. I remember, um, and, and Lord, I just pray, God, that you would, you would use this time uh, to build up your people. And we thank you. We ask your blessing. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Trey, <laughs> the topic of our discussion tonight is how to study the Bible. So let's yes. start with this. How important <laughs> is the Bible? How important is the Bible? My goodness, that's a big question. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it's, it's so important. Uh, the Bible is God's revelation of himself to us. Without it, there's no way we could know God's redemption and right. his plan. Um, we, we wouldn't know about Jesus, you know? It's true when you look out at like the, um, the mountains or the... the even satellite images of the earth or you see the stars and you see God's creation, the heavens declare the glory of God. But, and so they communicate truths about God, like his power, his divine attributes, it says in Romans 1, but, but we need more than that. And God gives us, and he has spoken in his word. Um, that's why, I mean, like, for instance, it's so important to, to support those who translate the scriptures and yeah. to, for missionaries all over the world. Without the Bible, we're lost. We need the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the, by the word. word of God, you know. So it's extremely important. Yeah. I start with that question because our topic is how to study the Bible. And I think if we don't first have an understanding of how important the scripture is, it's going to be a temptation not to study at all. Why do we need to study something that's not important? Yeah. Um, but I think this discussion for our congregation, how to study the Bible, is an important one. It's easy for us to assume as pastors, because this is what we do for a living, yeah. that everyone knows how to study the Bible. But if we're being honest, many of you would probably say that you don't know how to study the Bible. I think it's a good place to start just in a state of humility. Yeah, 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 and just, I mean, one thing we have to realize is that God desires all people to study his word, yeah. which sounds like such a, in church, you probably heard that and, and think, well, that's just, that's a no-brainer, of course, but there was a time in church history where, particularly at this time, not trying to bash any denomination, but it's yeah. just a fact, but where they kind of had the Bible, the Roman Catholics at the time had the Bible locked up and it was only for pastors, you know? Um, they taught the, the fancy word, uh, the nerd word that I'm sure you know, because as I shared last week, he's a nerd, right? <laughs> <laughs> we love him. But the nerd word is the perspicuity of the scriptures. Right. And that's just a fancy word that means clarity, that it's clear. Well, there was a time when many church officials taught that it was imp imperspicuous, mm -hmm. if I said that right. They, they taught that the common people couldn't understand it. Yeah. 
And the reformers came along, like Martin Luther and, and uh, John Calvin and Zwingli and some of these guys that said, no, no, the Bible is meant for every person. Actually, it goes before them in church history. But the clarity of scriptures means that there are some points that are hard to understand, but the main message is understandable, right. you know? Um, even as some parts are not as clear as others, the, the redemptive message is understandable for anybody who would read it, really. Yeah. So you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but it looks like to me when we approach this topic of studying the Bible that we're really dealing with two extremes. On the one extreme, you would have those who would say, lay people can't understand the Bible. Biblical interpretation is for those who have given their life to it, who know the original languages, who are able to take the Word of God and rightly interpret it. They're the only ones that can do that. But you also have another extreme where um, those say, well, the Bible can mean anything that I want it to mean. What does this Bible verse mean <laughs> to you, Pastor Trey? Yes, I did. it's so funny you bring up that question because, church, we didn't really plan out the details of this conversation, okay? <laughs> but I had turned to John chapter 1 to, to illustrate that very point. Is There are those that approach the Bible as, as though it can mean anything, yeah. right? And that question you asked, that's the way I, I went to as a... A child growing up, I remember many Sunday school classes and Bible studies, that the bulk of it was really us sitting in a circle, and we'd read a verse, and say, well, what does that verse mean to you, right? And it's so important to note that the text of Scripture has a meaning, an intended meaning, that God intended. Now, it may apply differently in our lives, right? Right. at different times but take a scripture for example i turn to this one in john 1 29 it's john the baptist and it says the next day john saw jesus coming toward him and said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world well that's an awesome verse but imagine sitting around and saying well okay what does that verse mean to you and somebody says well to me, that means that, that Jesus is sweet and cuddly like a lamb, right? <laughs> I mean, that's silly. Right. Uh, and then somebody else says, well, that means that, that Jesus is, uh, you know, that he um, is God's special lamb and God cares about him, which that is part of it in a sense. But you just go around the room, the circle, and you get all these meanings. They contradict one another. But for us to look at the verse and realize that God actually had a meaning for that. Yep. And that the word, and this is one of the key things about the scripture, is that the word of God <clears throat> interprets the word of God. And so, church, what that means is when you're when you're reading God's word and you see uh, you're reading things, and sometimes you come to things that you don't understand. First of all, let me say, don't panic, right? Yeah. That happens to me all the time. Keep reading because later you'll find something that clarifies that passage. So when we see the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, we might not understand that at first, but then later when we're reading in the Old Testament and we see a sacrificial lamb, right. it clicks. The Word of God interprets the Word of God, and we understand what was meant. Does Which that make mean, sense? It does, but it, it also means that you have to have somewhat of an understanding of the overall storyline, the overall narrative of Scripture. Yeah. And also what you're saying is not every interpretation is equally credible, is it? That's exactly right. You can interpret, which seems common sense again, but you can interpret things wrongly. Yeah. And... And when, when you come to things like commentaries, and th which are great, we have so many resources that can help, but we've got to always keep in mind that even if you have a study Bible, which, is that a study Bible? It is. Yeah, a, a MacArthur one? MacArthur yeah. study Bible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you have a study Bible, remember that those notes, yeah. you know, and you know this, but those notes are man-made. Not every interpretation is right. The Word of God actually means something. God intended 
that meaning, right? So that, that brings up a couple of questions, at least in my mind. There is a distinction that needs to be made, even with study Bibles, and I think we should talk about some of the tools that we have yeah. to help them. Um, but there is a distinction that needs to be made between the text of Scripture and the notes that explain the Scripture. Yeah. There are some words that we can use to describe the Scripture. The Scripture is inspired. It's not yeah. just inspiring, it's inspired right. by the Holy Spirit. Um, the Scripture is infallible. The Scripture is yeah. inerrant. And all these words mean that we can trust the Scripture. There's not yeah. going to be any mixture of error within the pages of Scripture. Everything that God has revealed to us right. through His Holy Word is absolute truth. That's especially important in a culture that doesn't believe in absolute truth, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, ab ab absolutely, yes, <laughs> yes. But, but that's just... And that's the thing. I know we're really emphasizing the fact that the Scripture has a particular meaning and not right. all interpretations equal. The reason that needs emphasis, and you know this very well because you went to a secular university mm -hmm. at one point, right? In your secular classes, when you were like in, an, in, in English and you're yeah. reading a book, the, the philosophy of interpretation is, well, what does this mean to you? Right. What, and I remember in English 102 at the University of Tennessee, I had to read The Shining, which is a scary, uh, well, it's a movie too, right. but oh, incredible. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I had to read the book, and then we'd go around and we'd talk about what it meant to us. You know, it's a very personal, me-centered approach to the Scripture. And to piggyback on what the text was about this morning is really... In worship, we lay ourselves at the altar and we try to conform ourselves to his word and renew our minds to it. Yeah. And so just knowing that it has a meaning, that's so important. And to, to think, I want to know what God meant when I read his word. And practically, well, let me ask you before I answer. <laughs> really practically, because I know yeah. they want some real practical handles in the process of sitting down with your Bible what are some, some steps or some helps on how to read it? Yeah. Um, well, one thing that I try to do when I'm sitting down to look at a passage, and I think this, this needs to be said too, you and I work very hard when we're going through these texts of Scripture in preparation to preach and to teach them. We work very hard to make sure that what we are teaching isn't what we think about the Scripture, isn't our opinion, right. but it's what the Word of God said, which is what we've said to this point. Um, the first thing that I will do when I'm approaching a passage of Scripture is I will read the Scripture over multiple times. It's yeah. a good thing to just read the Scripture. Before you get to the study notes, before you get to commentaries, right. before you read the notes in your Bible or any books about what has been said, read the Scripture. This is from God. It, a lot of times, if you read the study notes or the commentary first, and this is true of me, but I know it's true of of folks that are, you know, your everyday Christian reading the Bible. Mm. If you read the notes first, it actually can discourage you. Right. Because you read these notes, and this person, whether it's a good resource or a bad resource, they've got all this stuff written about That they've this, gotten from this that verse. That they've gotten it. And, and then you read it, and you think, well, I don't, I don't see any of that. I must not be smart enough to read this book, right? Yeah. And... So yeah, absolutely. It's so important. I'm glad you said that. Just to just to read, read the, the text. text. Read the text. And it's okay if you don't understand things, yeah, right? Yeah, there are going to be things in the Scripture that you don't understand. There are many things in the Scripture that, that we do not understand right. as pastors and teachers. Now, here's something that we need to understand. Don't get discouraged by that. If you yeah. are able to understand everything that was in the Scripture perfectly, that would probably mean that we were worshiping too small of a God. <laughs> that's, that's God right. is beyond our understanding. Yeah. So when he says things that don't completely make sense to us, you should expect that. Yeah. Now, you shouldn't be satisfied with that, meaning don't just read it and say, well, I don't understand that. That can't help me whatsoever. Right. No, there are tools that we have in order to be able to come to an understanding of the text. You start with the text. But then you can progress to other things that we have been given by God's common grace to come to understand it. Yeah. That's where the study Bibles come in. Yeah. That's where the commentaries come in. Now, I would encourage all of you, when you are using these tools, try your best to find tools that are credible tools. Yes. Not every tool has the same level of credibility, 
Mm-hmm. You shouldn't believe everything that you read. There are heretics out there. That's right. And that would, be, the that would be true with every book of the Scripture. That's right. But I think particularly those books that just lend themselves to all kinds of speculative garbage out there in the Christian market. Yeah. I mean, I say that just bluntly because it's true. But yeah. I think if you're studying the book of Revelation... Uh, a lot of garbage. Make sure that you have some credible resources. Yeah. Because if you read bad resources, it's so much more likely just to confuse you more than it helps, right? Yeah. And this is something, I, it's not directly about Bible study, but I, I think that a lot of people don't recognize it. Novels are not a good place to get your theology. Right. Right. Novels right. are not a good place. If you are just reading stories that people have written, there may be some things about God in there, but don't assume that everything you read in these bestsellers are accurate to the text of Scripture. I've heard people, um, Christians, who would say to me, well, I love Jesus, but theology really isn't that important to me. <laughs> That's kind of like saying, well, I love my wife, but I really don't care about what she thinks about anything. I don't care what she likes. Yeah. I don't care. Well, <laughs> exactly. you don't love your wife if you don't care what she thinks. In the same way, you cannot say, well, I love Jesus, but I don't care what he thinks about anything. Yeah. Theology is the study of God. And when you approach the Bible in Bible study, what you are trying to do through that is to see, God, what do you say? What do you say? Forget about what I think. It doesn't matter what I think. My opinions don't yeah. matter. What do you say to me through your word? What do you mean by this passage? And it's so important that we try to come yeah. to an accurate understanding of the mind of God. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Any other steps uh, we've got? Reading the text, and then you hit on putting, looking at some different resources. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. I've well, got some, but you go ahead. Sure. One other thing really quick that I would say is not everything is um, strictly scholarly. And what I, mean to, what I mean by that is we have a reliance and dependence on the Holy Spirit when we study yes. the Scripture. That's right. He is going to minister the truthfulness of the Word to us. If we are saved, God has given us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So yes, we use credible, faithful resources, but also you have to understand the Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth, and we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, yes, that, and that brings to mind, really, uh, where I, and I know you would agree, my starting point with reading the Bible, and I think it should be really every person's starting point, recognizing that God has spoken, it's, it's in the Word, it has a meaning, and we want to know what it means, and recognizing that we need God's help. And starting with prayer, you yeah. know? Absolutely. I, starting with prayer reminds me that I'm not just reading a dry textbook, that I'm That's reading right. His living Word, and it reminds me that we have the Holy Spirit, like you said, to help us and to guide us into truth. And so I'll open the word, and before I even read, I'll say, God, I know that you want to use this in my life. Would you, would you help me to understand it? You know, yeah. help me to understand what this means, right? That's right. Um, and so anyway. Prayer is yeah. essential in Bible yeah. study. Absolutely Ab essential. Yeah. Um, something that I would encourage people to do, too, don't assume that when you go into your Bible study, Many of you may say, well, I want to study the Bible. Truthfully, faithfully, don't assume you're going to have it all figured out in a month or yeah. in a year or in 10 years. Start just by reading the text. Yeah. Um, I advocate, and we're going to have, Lord willing, if um, God doesn't change anything, some seminars this year for our family ministry. Yeah. One of them is going to be family worship. Get your family together. Read the scripture. Sing a hymn. Um, pray together, and let that be the extent of your Bible study. Don't yeah. be satisfied with not knowing deeper things, but yeah. it is good just to read the Bible. Yes, yes. And as you're exposed more and more, you'll find that God starts helping, He helps you to make connections, right. you know? And that's what I found as a young Christian. I didn't know much of the Bible, but God did a work in my heart. I started reading it. Couldn't get enough of His Word, but uh, I hadn't been to seminary, wasn't, you know, or anything like that. I was just a regular Christian. But as I started to read, God kept showing me how this scripture helps me understand this one. And so it's so important. Just read the Bible. Just read it. You yeah. know, read it depending on God. Pray about it, but read it. So, so what's your process for Bible study? 
Well, my process really, I, I ask questions as I read, yep. and that helps me in my process. I start with prayer, um, and then what I'll do is I will read a passage of Scripture. Maybe it's a couple verses. It doesn't have to be a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we looked at two verses this morning, you know, out of yeah. Romans 12. It doesn't have to be a lot. But I'll look at a passage of Scripture, and one of the things I found most helpful is instead of diving into every detail of the text, the first thing I do is I say, okay, in a sentence or two, what's the main point? Right? To be yeah. able to summarize and to say, you know what, the main point of the book of Revelation is Jesus is King. I mentioned Revelation because before I was, before I was a pastor, I remember Revelation, the book of Revelation, so uh, intimidated me, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's natural because it is confusing. And I was getting mixed messages from different commentaries and whatnot, and I finally said, forget all the commentaries. <laughs> And it was the yeah. best thing I ever did because what I did is I said, I'm just going to read the book of Revelation and I'm going to read the whole book and I'm going to ask, what's the main point? Yeah. The main point is Jesus is king forever, right? Yeah. It doesn't tell me exactly where the millennium lines up or about the tribulation. I didn't have all that worked yeah. out, but I got the main point of the book of Revelation. Jesus is king and as I read it and just asked, what's the main point? That was the most helpful thing I did in Bible study. So yeah. I asked the main point. Uh, then I asked, how does this apply to, to culture? You know, how does this apply to our lives in our day? And, you know, I mean, if he's, for instance, if he's king, I have to say, well, what's he king over? What areas of life is he king over? And I'll just, I'll explore and really, sometimes I even make a list of all the applications I can think of for this scripture. Yeah. It helps me when I preach for one, but it's a good thing just for average, you know, everyday Bible believers right. to do. Think about that application. And then prayerfully I ask, well, okay, these are ways that it applies generally. God, how are you impressing it on my heart today? How do you want me to change, right? Yeah. So that's kind of what I do. I know that's not profound or anything, but that's but what really I do. But it really doesn't need to be profound because, no. you know, unless you're just extremely arrogant, none of us ought to think, well, I'm a profound human being. Yeah. Right? That, that, that's not <laughs> helpful when we approach the Scripture. Um, we need to keep it simple in that God's given us His Word. He has showed us what He wants us to know. Don't try to come up with more than the text says. Yeah. Right? Yeah, stick with dangerous. what God has said. We can stick a whole lot of things into the Bible that are not there by trying to be profound. That's not yeah. helpful. That's not profitable. Here's yeah. two questions I would ask, especially um, knowing that many of the people who are watching this would, would say, well, all, the, all of that is great, but where do I start? So here's yeah. what I would ask. Where do we start? And also, um, when we point people to different good examples, good resources. Who are some names you might think of? Well, this is where I would send you if you want to see somebody that's credible. Okay, well, I'm going to reflect that question back to you in just a moment. Okay. So, <laughs> um, but uh, what was the first part again? The first one is where do we start? <laughs> where do we start? I don't, I don't know the right answer for that. I know what I've said to people, right? Yeah. Um, at different times in my life, I've said, well, start in Genesis. That's where the book starts, yeah. right? Um, that's not bad, right? But it is, you know, for a new believer, it might be good if you're a brand new believer to start in the gospel of Mark, right? Yeah. It's the gospel message unfolding. Some people recommend John. John's a good place to start too, Yeah. but John goes really deep and sometimes... Sometimes I think it's a little hard for new believers, but, but Mark is a great place to start. Um, what about you? What do you think? I usually send people to John because yeah. um, I want them to see the deity of Christ up front. Yeah. I think it's absolutely essential for, um, if we are going to hold the Scripture in high regard, we need to hold the author and the subject of Scripture in high regard. Yeah. So a lot of times I will point them to John, um, first thing, I encourage people, if you can, 
take a Bible reading plan and try to read through the Bible in a year. Now, here's yes. what I know in saying that, okay? Yeah. I want to be careful when I say that. It is not the case that you are not a true Christian if you do not do that. Right. We can make right. that so dogmatic that we send the wrong and impression. It almost come, can, can come across as like legalistic. It can. You know, Another and thing, yeah. and we don't want to do that. Right. What I would encourage people to do in that Bible reading plan, do it with your family so you can minister to your children the importance of the Scripture. Pick a Bible reading plan that has a couple of days leeway in it. So my Bible reading plan yep. that I'm going through this year, you read the Bible five days a week. Now, I try to read the Bible every day of the week, so I can get ahead a little bit in my Bible reading yeah. plan. But if I miss a day, what a lot of people will say, well, it's January, what, 10th today? Well, I'm yeah. already three days behind on my Bible reading uh, plan. I'm yeah. never going to catch up, <laughs> right. so I give up. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want people to become discouraged with their Bible reading plans. Right. So pick something that's going to keep you consistent. Maybe a Bible checklist that doesn't go day by day, but you can just check it off yeah. as you go. That's what I've done a lot. Yeah. Um, but make it a routine part of your life and your family's life so that you can see the importance of it. So that's how I would right. say to start. It's not always necessarily that a book is a good place to start. Just mm -hmm. start reading. Yeah. Just start reading. Um, now, the easiest way to do that is to pick a book. Don't worry so much about the book. Right. Okay? Pick right. a book, read the Bible. Make it a discipline in your life. Yeah. And you will learn and progress as you are consistent with that discipline. Yeah, if... I believe that if, if believers just persist in reading the Bible, just persist. You don't understand? Okay, press on, yep. right? Just persist. You miss a day? Okay, get over it, right? And press on. I mean, yep. Maybe that sounded mean, but, but just keep going. Absolutely. If, if you just do that, over time, the Holy Spirit will help you understand, you know, and, yep. and make those connections and, and see the storyline of the Bible. Right? Yeah. Um, as far as resources, I think study Bibles are great as long as, like we mentioned earlier, we remember that the notes in the bottom are man made. Right. Right? We got to make a distinction between God's Word and man's Word. But study Bibles are great. A MacArthur study Bible is good, isn't it? Amen. Blaine, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how many, I'm just curious, real quick, how many MacArthur study Bibles do you have, Blaine? How many MacArthur's? Yeah. Well, I have um, <laughs> I have two, soon to be three MacArthur study uh. Bibles. I have probably ten study Bibles yeah, yeah. of different kinds. And it's funny that you mentioned study Bibles. There are a lot of different study Bibles. Some study Bibles are really good. Mm. Some study Bibles are really bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would encourage people to look at study Bibles like the MacArthur study Bible, um, the ESV study Bible. The Christian Standard ESV Study is Bible. Excellent. It yeah. really is a wonderful, wonderful resource that I um, that I use all the time in my preaching. Yeah, um, I know that you have some that you like also. Another one's yeah. the Reformation Study Bible. There's so many good ones. Right. Find um, study Bibles that are written by groups of people or mm -hmm. credible people. Yeah. I know a study Bible that you often use is the Apologetic Study Bible. Yes, yes, I love my Apologetic Study Bible. It's a good one. I think it's really good for like. Uh, high school and college students because it yeah. answers tough questions about the faith. But um, I love the ESV study Bible. I love Second it too. to the to the apologetic study Bible, I've probably used it more than anyone it's a very in the good past. resource. And uh, it is an excellent one. MacArthur is an excellent study Bible. But um, I think I like study Bibles because it makes it accessible. It yeah. helps and it can fill you in on maybe some of the cultural practices or or archaeological background or, or whatever that helps us understand the text, right? Yeah. And so it's a good thing. But um, uh, that brings up an interesting question, though. As you were mentioning different study Bibles, I thought of, well, what about different translations? Yeah. Not all translations are created equal either. No. Right? Um, what is your number one least favorite translation? <laughs> well, you opened up that door, so yes. let's go there. Um, so this is an interest of mine because I love the Bible, okay? When we talk about Bible translations, we have kind of a spectrum of Bible translations. On the left side of this spectrum, we see things um, like the message, 
okay? Mm -hmm. It's probably my least favorite, but I'm not saying that it's not um, useful. Yeah. Okay, what I'm trying to say when I'm talking about Bible translations, you, the message is what we call a paraphrase. That means you might take a paragraph of Scripture right. and you paraphrase what that means. That's useful in some ways. It's more like a, the message is useful in terms of like, almost like a commentary. It's almost like a commentary. It helps summarize what it is, but it's not a direct translation no, of No, and it, it's not really trustworthy if you really want to know what God says. Yes. What a paraphrase is doing is it's taking what God has said and it's putting it into what um, the words of a man, what a man would translate this to mean. Yeah. Okay? Is more like a commentary. On the opposite end of this spectrum, we have um, translations that are word for word. That means we go back to the Greek and the Hebrew languages, and if there is an English word that directly corresponds to the Greek or the Hebrew, um, then we translate that directly as best we can. Mm -hmm. That never works out perfectly. Yeah. On that end of the spectrum, we have things like um, the ESV, the New American Standard Bible. I love those translations. That is my preference. Right. Now, the Holman Christian Standard that you use and the Christian Standard, the revision of that, yeah. are, that is also a very good translation. I'm moving that way quite a bit <laughs> um, because it is very understandable. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it is very trustworthy. When we are looking at Bible translation, what we're really looking at is readability and, um, and how accurate it is to the original language. Which is why, by the way, when you think of readability, that I don't use the King James translation, yeah. at least in Not that it's a bad Bible. It's not a bad Bible, but it was written in the 1600s. You right. know? And, and what that means is that it was written in the language of that day. We don't use these and nows. It is a good translation. Yeah. And, and it, I do use it sometimes. I, I use do it too. At, I use it at gravesides a lot, for instance. I think it's helpful but, for people to know, though, also that the translators of the King James Bible never intended for it to be the standard that um, no other Bible is trustworthy, no other Bible right. can be used. It was a translation like any other translation. Yeah. In uh, fact, yeah, they used some previous translations sure in constructing did. the King James. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I think this has been helpful. Any any so. other thoughts? And then I'll I'll offer a concluding thought yeah. too. Just Let practical me, tips. Okay, I know we got to close, so I'm going to be really quick with this. Yeah, I want to give a few websites that oh, people good, can go good. to. Okay, that's a great idea. Um, because the reason that I do this is because I know that there are so many resources, and just to say pick a good resource, well, what they think might be a good resource might not right. actually be a good resource. Not that you all aren't capable, but just to hear it from our perspective. Okay. Yeah. This might get me in trouble, but I'm going to say it. I don't really care. Um, I try to go with Reformed resources. Mm -hmm. Because when I say Reformed, what yeah. I mean is biblical. Yeah. yeah I yeah. want people to have a high view of Scripture and go to the Bible. And Reformed resources, by and large, yeah. do that. Well, it's like your Reformation study Bible. That, yeah. that is a Reformed resource. Uh, it's, it's a great resource. Yeah. But there's nothing in either of these texts or, or any of these texts. They're man-made. We right. wouldn't agree with everything they said, no. But but they're good, and they right. seek to to help us with the Word of God. Right. So, so a couple of names and 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 websites, yeah. real quick. Doctor John MacArthur, Grace to You, is yes. a great resource. Yep. If you go to t4g.org, t4g is a ministry led by Al Moeller, Mark Dever, and Ligon Duncan. If you go to that website, they will have a list of speakers. Any work that is yeah. written by any of those speakers, while we might not agree with everything that is ever said, right. generally speaking, those are good resources. Yeah. The Gospel Coalition is a good resource yeah. um, to go to. Anything by Dr. R.C. Sproul, again, he's mm -hmm. a Presbyterian. We don't agree with everything, right. but right. in large terms, we do. Okay? Yeah. So names like that is who I would go to. Absolutely. That's good. That's good. You can get some free resources even on on uh, websites like Blue Letter Bible. Yeah. You know, and those are free. Uh, there's there's a various resources on there, and not all of them are as good as others, but right. they're free, um, so that's good. But a um, few quick things I just leave leave you with is uh, church family when you when you approach the text. Um, Pray and, and seek to understand the meaning. And I would encourage you to try what helps me, like I mentioned, 
Try to summarize it in your own words, okay? That's why the message isn't very helpful because it's, it's doing for you what you should be doing Yourself. in your own time. Wow. That's, that's time where you read the Word of God and you think, well, what is it meaning and how could I, I uh, uh, summarize it in my own words, right? We learn that way. And so try that. Try saying what the passage means, the paragraph in your own words. And then think about how it applies, what are the connecting points in culture, and always ask God to help you see how he wants you to change in light of God's word. Right. But, One more note real yes. quick, and then I know yes. that we have to conclude. Don't be afraid to ask your pastor or to ask the elders in your church. Yes. If they do not know the answer, if they are a faithful minister, they will try their best to find the answer for you or at least lead you in a God-glorifying direction. That's what right. we're here for. We want to help you with Bible study. That's why we do things like this. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I hope, I hope this is, was beneficial. Uh, next Sunday night, we're looking to uh, begin a series in the book of Philippians. And so we, uh, we may not, we're not going to have a roundtable discussion next Sunday night, but we may revisit these from time to time. I really enjoy them. I do too. Uh, we got a lot of good feedback last week, and uh, I, hope, I hope this was a blessing for you tonight. But uh, I'll, I'll pray for us, and, and we'll be dismissed. But church family, Amen. it's been good together, at least in this way. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Blaine and his willingness and, and just the heart you've given him for your word. And I enjoy these conversations so much. They help me grow. I pray, Lord, that, that it was a blessing to those that are, that are listening. And Father, I pray that you would help each of us get into your word and to try to, on a regular basis, God, to take in your word because your words are life. They, yes, Lord. It's through your word that you give us life. And we thank you, God. And I just ask your blessing, and uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right.